Hello, I'm Kit Clues, designer of the Portsmouth Tide Clock, and I'd like to tell you a bit about how it works. Life here in Portsmouth has always been ruled by the tides. To this day, the navigation of ships coming from around the world is still precisely synchronized with the daily flow of tides in and out of Portsmouth Harbor. While the sea level actually changes eight feet every six hours, it's difficult to perceive this change at any given moment. My goal was to create a sculpture that could at once amplify and celebrate the everyday occurrence of this primal event. I envisioned building a giant tide clock that might actually have been a part of the 18th century waterfront site where it was to be located. I began sketching mechanisms that could operate continuously without fuel or electricity, using only tidal energy as a source of power. After considering many designs, my final solution was simple, at least in theory. Making it work smoothly and accurately took considerable calculation and several months to engineer and build. The Portsmouth Tide Clock made its debut at the AEP exhibition at the Wentworth Coolidge Historic Site on July 29, 2011. Even as visitors to the sculpture watch it moving with the waves and the tide, they continue to ask, we see it working, but how does it work? Well, quite simply, in fact, the giant sculpture is activated by a buoy floating just offshore. A rope from the buoy runs down through a pulley anchored to the bottom of the bay. From there, the rope runs through a second pulley and then to a large horizontal drum on shore. As the buoy rises with the tide, the gauge is pulled to ever higher readings around its circular dial. As the tide falls, a counterweight pulling against the floating buoy rotates the gauge back toward lower readings on the dial. A large ball-bearing hub under the drum allows the giant gauge to react quickly to even the slightest sea level changes. Of course, the tide clock is not a time clock, rather a tide cycle clock. It reads in feet of water as the tide rises and falls through its roughly 8-foot cycle twice a day. Well, actually twice every 25 hours to be precise. Even though the dial is calibrated to coincide with mean sea level, it must allow for readings from below zero to 10 feet to accommodate regular seasonal swings of neap and syzygy tides, not to mention our storm-related flood tides. Relying on the basic relationship of a circle to its diameter, namely c equals pi d, I was able to size the drum as well as the outer circumference of the dial precisely so that the end of the needle moves exactly 10 feet for every one foot of tidal change. Thus, if the water rises one foot per hour, the needle will move 10 feet per hour, and that is equivalent to two inches per minute, which indeed makes the motion of tidal change quite visible. So the next time you're in New Hampshire, I hope you'll come see for yourself. The tides, they are a-changing.